Well, the last uh, one of the last big pieces I wrote was for the ONJ, the Orchestral National de Jazz, and it's called Shut Up and Dance. And the idea with that piece was um, that uh, it would each piece had to do with dance or movement, and um, each piece also was there was ten people in the band. Each piece was written for to feature one of those people. So there would be ten pieces, and I had to really, you know, get the right piece for each person, but also get something that was different for each piece, but that would still have something to do with movement or dance. And, the, and, I, and I kept asking, well, will there be a dancer? And, you know, uh, the, the, the director really didn't want that. He really wanted there to be this imagination of dancing, and you make up your own dancer. But then, <laughs> at the last minute, when they, they premiered it in Paris, they actually had some uh, dancers come on and 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 uh, play, for, you know, with the pieces. It's pretty amazing. Like, uh, it look it's great what they did, you know. But that was like a really came much later after the music was done, and and they did it really at the last minute. It was almost like improvisational, but really beautiful. And then I just wrote a piece for the University of the Arts, a uh, big band. For the, uh, they had a big festival in Philadelphia about Paris in 1920, like Paris, like a hundred years ago, basically. So I wrote this piece kind of about uh, Modrian and how he came to Paris during that time and how Paris influenced him. And and um, and then they had a choreographer come in, and I never saw what she did until the performance. And uh, she only had like a, she didn't even have a real recording of the piece. She had like a little MIDI version of it, and somehow. She did this, you know, amazing thing. So it was just great to just see, just see what someone would come up with, you know, from from the music. But I, I, when I first moved to New York, even though I'd never done it before, I really wanted to be involved with dancers. And uh, so I found out really quickly that a lot of the drummers that I liked, in the daytime, they played for dance classes. That was kind of how they had some sort of steady income. So I started doing that really quickly, and and. And that um, definitely influenced, you know, me aesthetically. And then I started working with Mark Morris, who's like an uh, incredible um, choreographer. And then I still play with Meredith Monk, who's both a composer and choreographer. So dance is a big is a big part somehow of of what I'm doing. I'd love to write for films. Some people have used my music for films, but I and I studied it in school. That was one thing that I did study was film scoring, but. It's a, uh, I've never quite, you know, it's a whole nother field. You know? I met um, J.J. Johnson, who, who used to do a lot of TV things at the time, and he said, he, had, he told me to um, learn how to play golf. If I wanted to be a film score uh, composer, that learning golf would be the most important thing I could do. <laughs> to schmooze or because yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah, you could, you know, you can hang with the right people, and yeah, and I never really did that, so. Hasn't happened yet, but I'd love to write for film or, you know, have someone use my music for a film. This is John Hollenbeck. For more interviews, go to jazztimes.com.